Welcome to my 30 upcoming PC role-playing games for 2018 and 2019 list. Now, making an RPG list is tricky as RPGs can be incredibly different from one another. They range from seriously dark and gritty classic RPGs to adventuring action RPGs to light-hearted RPGs where you live a pleasant life in a charming new world. Because of that, I try to arrange the games in this list thematically to keep some order. There are also many bonus games mentioned after the main list, so be sure to watch all the way through. Also, do remember I have whole other lists dedicated to MMOs and space, where some games that could be considered RPGs are listed. Alright, now let's get started. First we have Pathfinder Kingmaker by Owlcat Games. Pathfinder is basically a pen and paper fantasy RPG, which is an evolution to the 3.5 D&D rule set. Here it's being made digital in an isometric party-based CRPG with a companion-focused story, deep character development, meaningful choices and consequences for your actions, and you'll also be able to establish your kingdom by claiming land, building towns and cities, and ruling as you see fit. Notably, Chris Avalone, a rather prolific game designer particularly for RPGs, is involved, which generally is a good sign. Raising $900,000 on Kickstarter, and a decent amount of gameplay footage being shown off, it's looking good. So go check it out if you're looking for a new CRPG. Next we've got Tower of Time by Event Horizon. Assemble your party and enter the mysterious Tower of Time. The thing that sets this one apart is the arrow time combat system, which is like bullet time for RPGs that allows more strategic play. There's also an XP-less character progression system with discoveries unlocking new skills and leveling up your character, challenges, puzzles, crafting, city upgrading and more, while promising at least 30 hours of gameplay and story. It's been in early access since mid-2017 on Steam, garnering very positive reviews and impressing many with the combat system, though it might not be polished or content-filled enough if you're looking for something bigger. Aiming for a March 2018 release, if you like the look of it, you should be able to play the full experience soon. Then we've got Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire by Obsidian Entertainment. Captain your ship on a dangerous voyage of discovery across the vast, unexplored archipelago region of the Deadfire. Here comes a new installment to Pillars of Eternity from the renowned RPG developers Obsidian. Return to Eora, party up with companions with a new relationship system, explore the island chain of Deadfire, and captain your ship by hiring crew, maintaining and upgrading it while taking it into ship-to-ship -ship combat. Do well and you'll be able to buy bigger and better ships. The first game was really well liked thematically and mechanically, and this time they're bringing this CRPG back but with ships and pirates. Releasing April 4th, 2018, you may want to jump in if you like the first game or CRPGs with a bit of a pirate theme. Next up we've got Druid Stone, The Secret of Menhir Forest by Control alt ninja Play the role of a druid who has just been reincarnated and has amnesia. Battle monsters with spells and swords, meet interesting NPCs, and combat uses a tactical turn-based system. The developers are people who worked on Legend of Grimrock, but they seem to be trying something new this time. Initially, the game was meant to be completely procedural too, but more recently they got a level editor working and are making more handcrafted content, which can be a good thing. Unfortunately, there really isn't much gameplay footage to look at right now, so if you like the look of it, you can keep an eye until more is revealed. And then we have Ashen by Aurora44. You are a lone wanderer in a sunless land in this third-person action RPG about forging relationships. Interestingly, you can choose to guide those you trust back to your camp and maybe by sticking together you stand a chance. High-risk combat against giant creatures, non-linear progression in an open world, and passive multiplayer. The comparison to Dark Souls is unavoidable here, though we haven't seen too much of the game yet, so when more is revealed we'll see if it scratches the same itch as Dark Souls, be something entirely different, or just fail to live up to expectations. And next we've got Code Vein by Bandai Namco Studios. Some people call this a Souls-like game, others say it's more like God Eater. There are those who say Anime Bloodborne. Whatever you want to compare it to, this is a third-person action RPG set in a post-apocalyptic dystopia with a vampire theme. After seeing some footage, you should know basically what to expect. Big weapons, big monsters, gifts or special abilities, and skill-based combat. But there are a few things that set it apart. For example, having an AI companion that you work together with, and the whole vampirism thing. 
Overall, we're probably not going to get Dark Souls 4, and it's unclear if Bloodborne 2 is anywhere near, if it's planned at all. So if you're into these games, you might like this one too. Then we have Vampire by Don't Nod Entertainment. While we're on vampires, it's now London 1918, and you are a newly turned vampire, and as a doctor, you need to find a cure to save the city from disease. Where playstyle and choice really comes in is how you decide to behave as a vampire. Do you kill and feed off those you are meant to heal, or do you try to be more of a pacifist? Develop your powers and change the citizens of the city by your choices and actions. Overall, this is looking decent, and if you're into vampires, then you should enjoy playing this one. So let's hope all the pieces come together and the full game lives up to expectations. Next up we have Greedfall by Spiders. What looks to be a colonial fantasy action RPG. Despite the cool looking trailer, we haven't seen anything real from the game yet, so we can't really say much. Also, it's from the developers of Bound by Flame and The Technomancer, which weren't received as the best of games. Though hopefully this one makes more of a mark and when more is revealed, we'll see if gameplay is as cool as the trailer. Then we've got Novus Inceptio by McMagic Productions. This one is an RPG with survival elements, set in a far future version of Earth. A fully interactable environment, complex crafting systems, plenty of character options, aging, building, farming, and all the stuff you can expect from an RPG like this. It's been an early access on Steam since the end of 2015, which is quite a while, but it's still getting regular updates and had mostly positive reviews until recently where it dropped to mix due to its unfinished state. The team behind it is small, but reports seem to indicate it's made a lot of progress after two years. It's got potential, but you may want to wait until it's closer to release before giving it a shot. Next up we've got Dayland by Chibig. Alright, on a lighter note, this is more of a relaxing kind of RPG. These games are all about living a new life and tend to have farming, crafting, and building mechanics built into a world to explore, quests to complete, and characters to know. I've got three games like this to list, and this first one also has survival mechanics, character leveling, and climate events. It raised $30,000 on Kickstarter, so we can expect a smaller game, but managed well, it could still be a calm but good experience. Not managed well, and you could end up with barely a game. If you like the look of this, we have a couple more games along these lines, so let's look at those first. Then we have My Time at Portia by Pathea Games. Continuing the lighthearted theme, here's another life to lead in the enchanting town of Portia. Restore a neglected workshop, grow crops, raise animals, befriend townspeople, and uncover mysteries. You also make your mark as you explore, battle, level up, and complete quests. So far, this one is looking decent with a big list of features on the way, and they say that they're inspired by Studio Ghibli work, which will please some. It also raised almost $150,000 on Kickstarter, so it does have a decent fun behind it. And next we've got Re-Legend by Magnus Games. Now, this one is a co-op game based around the taming and raising of magical beings called Magnus. Farming, crafting, and rebuilding a village are a part of what you do along with combat, befriending villagers, and leveling up life skills solo or in up to four-player multiplayer. It raised 630,000 Singapore dollars on Kickstarter, hitting all its stretch goals. So it's got a pretty big pool of money backing it up. This one does go in an even cuter aesthetic than the last one, and also seems to be the most feature-filled compared to the last two games listed. Either way, if you're into these kinds of RPGs, here's another one you can check out. And then we've got Spellbound by Chucklefish. After the success of Stardew Valley, which was published but not developed by Chucklefish, they're now looking at going all out into another game like that with a new twist. This is basically Stardew Valley plus Harry Potter as a wizard school RPG. Interestingly, they're going a bit more realistic with relationships this time, unlike in most games like this where you can build and live out your perfect fantasy. But particularly here, things can go wrong and the whole school experience might leave you a bit bent out of shape. There is also combat though, resembling 2D Zelda games, and lots of magic, crafting, potion making, and farming systems. It's important to note that they're clear that everything is still up to change right now, and release is quite a ways out. But if you've been wanting a magic school RPG type thing, you can keep an eye on this one. And then we have The Swords of Ditto by One Bit Beyond. A compact action RPG set in a delightful but dangerous overworld, menacing dungeons, and a charming village. 
quest to defeat the evil that plagues the island where each adventure you embark on with a new hero becomes its own legend in a kind of roguelike approach. You can also play the game solo or in local co-op mode. It's published by Devolver Digital, who usually helps get games right, and this one is looking good. The art style and direction is super cute, but gameplay looks like it's going to be challenging and dying is part of the game. It's being compared to old school Zelda and a bit of Rogue Legacy, but with co-op, which you may or may not like. Next up we've got Moonlighter by Digital Sun. You know those shopkeepers in RPGs? Well what if they were actually adventurers themselves in secret? That's what Moonlighter is all about. This action RPG has roguelite elements focusing on two sides of the coin, a shopkeeper's everyday routine while secretly dreaming of becoming a hero. You'll conduct business, meet villagers, craft, while also loot, fight, and open gates to different worlds. It's an interesting concept, but it's easy for a pixel art action RPG with roguelite elements to get lost in the crowd. Hopefully this one does manage to hold its own, and doesn't just rely on its gimmick. Then we've got Death Trash by Crafting Legends. Okay, that's enough cute stuff for now. To break away from that, here's a game called Death Trash, because that's the least cute we can get right now. This is a post-apocalyptic RPG with action elements and a focus on narrative and dialogue. Cyberpunk, sci-fi, horror-esque with trash talk humor. This certainly looks different and takes full advantage of the pixel art style to be gritty and grimy. Local co-op is also a thing though. It's pretty dark and might be a bit much for some, but if it pulls off the aesthetic well, this could be one you won't forget. And then we have Odd Gods by In Between Worlds. 90s styled hardcore CRPG about the 1990s. This is an isometric tactical RPG about subcultures, music, space time travel, and facing pop culture demons. You travel through space-time to create your character using subcultures and genres of music as you fight in simultaneous turn-based combat. It sounds cool, but confusing, but screenshots show off a unique looking game. Though because little gameplay is visible at the moment, I can't say too much as everything is up to change, but I'm sure hoping this turns out as something unique. And then we've got No Truce with the Furies by Zaum. Z-A-U-M. RPG meets cop show where you get to play whatever kind of cop you want to be. Be the good cop, bad cop, fascist cop, socialist revolutionary cop, or even a criminal mastermind disguised as a cop. There's a story combat system where encounters are dialogue based and part of the story. Deep cop customization with a focus on psychological skills, an inventory for your thoughts, substance abuse, and an open world city for you to explore. It looks like a nice balance of returning to the roots of RPG while also innovating at the same time. One of my favorite things in games is moral ambiguity and meaningful choices, but those are also very hard to really get right. If they manage it, this could be great. Next we have Stellar Tactics by Maverick Games. Now, into space with a CRPG with challenging tactical turn-based combat, exploring a procedural universe, classless character progression, trading, mining, and more, driven by dynamic missions and narrative based on deep lore. In early access on Steam since the end of 2016, it's received very positive reviews so far, and gameplay looks solid. Regular updates are also the norm. There aren't many CRPGs set in space, so if you've been looking for one, here it is. Then we've got Griftlands by Clay Entertainment. Choose your character and make your fortune in a world where everything is negotiable. Money, loyalty, and even morality. From Clay Entertainment, the makers of Don't Starve and Oxygen Not Included, they're once again making a unique looking game with a hand-drawn 2D art style. Although the trailer and screenshots look great, it does say it would release late 2017 to early 2018, however there's no official website at the time, and not many details on the Steam page, and little proper gameplay footage. It could be great, but with so little to go on, we'll just have to wait for a better look. Next up we have Deep Sky Derelicts by Snowhound Games. Sci-Fi Darkest Dungeon. That's what it looks like and that's basically what it is, with some interesting unique takes. Turn-based tactical combats with cards, a retro-futuristic 2D art style, procedural generation, and plenty of character and party customizations. 
It's in early access now with very positive reviews on Steam, though it's still lacking content, and there are some concerns with gameplay and pacing. Planning for a March 2018 release though, hopefully they'll fix up everything in time. And then we've got Sunless Skies by Fail Better Games. The successor to Sunless Sea, this is a literary RPG set in a universe steeped in celestial horror with a Victorian theme. It's the dawn of the 20th century and London has taken to the stars. Travel between ports to unravel stories, manage resources to avoid mutiny and death, customize your crew and vessel, fight to survive, make decisions that influence the political landscape and leave your mark on the universe. There are some pretty heavy and grim choices to make too. This is looking like what it's meant to be, a successor to its predecessor. And if you like the first game or just like the look of gameplay, check it out. And next we have Kenshi by Lo-Fi Games. You are not the chosen one. This one is a free-roaming squad-based RPG with open-ended sandbox gameplay that emphasizes that you are just another person in the sword punk themed world. Playing the role you want is the focus. Be a thief, rebel, warlord, mercenary, trader, doctor, peacekeeper, business person, explorer, or even a slave. Besides that, customize your squad, survive, and you can build a fortress. The idea is to start as nothing and build up your power over time. And it's been in development since at least 2008, and a decade is a very long time. But the more recent early access on Steam has received very positive reviews. Although it visually looks a bit unpolished, and there are a lot of reports of bugs, there is depth to the gameplay which has been surprising many. Aiming for a big update and release in 2018, if they refine the game in time, then it could provide something unique. Next we have Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom by Level 5. Set hundreds of years after Wrath of the White Witch, Revenant Kingdom focuses on two warring tribes and being dethroned. A captivating story, new and traditional RPG elements combined, real-time battles, and a Ghibli-inspired world is what's on offer here. Generally, it looks solid, but there's been some backlash regarding chibi styles, removal of familiars, RTS gameplay, and a changed combat system. After being delayed twice, the game should have had enough time to iron out any major issues though, and release is now set for the 23rd of March 2018. There are also four different additions to the game you can buy in a season pass too, so make of that what you will. The first game received critical acclaim, so we can hope the sequel manages to live up to the reputation, despite the changes. Then we've got Biomutant by Experiment 101. Here we have an open-world, post-apocalyptic, kung-fu fable action RPG with a martial arts-styled combat system. Thematically, the game is about a plague killing the tree of life, recoding genetic structures and divided tribes that you could unify or take down. The third-person combat system allows you to mix melee, shooting, and mutant ability action, and looks cool, but I know not everyone likes their RPGs quite so action-y. Environments, scenarios, and characters do look unique and diverse from what we've seen of gameplay, though early footage does seem somewhat unpolished. Another important point is that throughout the game there's this narrator talking, and it hasn't been to everyone's liking either. If you like the look of it so far, check out more gameplay footage, and you should be able to decide from there. Next up we have Monster Hunter World by Capcom. Battle gigantic monsters in epic locales. Take on quests as a hunter and hunt monsters to gain resources and upgrade your gear to hunt even more dangerous monsters. The game boasts a living world, diverse weapons, customization of skills and equipment, and a gathering hub for up to 16 players to join up to quest or just hang out. Released on consoles first, those waiting for the PC version can have a good look at gameplay right now, but as with any PC port, we should be cautious. If there aren't any performance or optimization issues, downgrades or missing features, then the PC version will hopefully live up to expectations set by the console. And then we've got Underworld Ascendant by Other Side Entertainment. From the creators of the old Ultima Underworld series, here's a first-person action RPG revolving around player choice in a dangerous fantasy realm. Exploit your environment to your advantage, overcome challenges, and make choices that lead to opportunities and consequences as you become embroiled in an epic plot of rival factions. It's drawing on some old-school dungeon crawling, which could be a nice modernization of old ideas, but that approach could also end up bringing old problems back to life. 
Though if they actually deliver on their promises, then it has the potential to be a nice experience. Scheduled for a 2018 release, we should be seeing more soon. And next we have The Bard's Tale 4 by Inexile Entertainment. Returning to the classic fantasy RPG of yesteryear, the new Bard's Tale is boasting dynamic phase-based combat, up to six adventurers to build and customize, and first-person exploration of maze-like dungeons filled with puzzles and riddles. Realistic environments, fantastical creatures, a compelling story, and Gaelic music that affects gameplay are all a thing here. Stating to be a true successor to the original trilogy, there's a lot of interest in this and it raised over one and a half million dollars in crowdfunding. It does look great, but some things have looked rough in the footage seen so far, particularly the UI. But they did say they'll be changing that. Scheduled for 2018, we should be getting this soon. Just look up more recent gameplay footage first to see what the changes are like before jumping in. Then we have Kingdom Come Deliverance by War Horse Studios. After years of watching and waiting, this one finally has a release date and it's February 13th, 2018. This story-driven open-world RPG set in the Holy Roman Empire brings realism in terms of visuals and gameplay, most notably the difficult-to-master combat system. You play as Henry, a blacksmith's son, and enter into the service of a noble where you begin completing quests full of choices that shape your character and reputation. The game world is large and there are battles and castle sieges too. Starting on Kickstarter in 2014, it raised funds quickly and going through alpha and beta stages kept its development in sight. You can spend a ton of time watching more gameplay footage, so it should be easy to decide if you'd be into this one. Finally, we've got Wasteland 3 by Inexile Entertainment. One more game from Inexile and scheduled for 2019, here comes the next step in the post-apocalyptic party-based RPG series. Deep tactical turn-based combat, an expansion of wasteland design and atmosphere, notably with snow, and story-driven synchronous and asynchronous multiplayer with a friend. Choices you make can open up or close off opportunities, areas, story arcs, and lots of other content in general, and you'll be facing difficult moral choices that will change the game world. Raising over three million dollars, there's a lot of backing for this, and it should turn out to be a step up from the previous game. So if you've been looking for a CRPG set in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, we'll go check out Wasteland 2, and then keep an eye on this one. Now for some bonus games. We've got some remasters and remakes, specifically Avenom 3 got a reboot, Secret of Mana got a remake, and Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition is on the way. Then coming to the PC, Final Fantasy XV will be arriving on PC on the 6th of March 2018. And also as a note, Final Fantasy VII Remake is on the way, but it'll probably be releasing for consoles first. But the current trend is that it will come to PC later on. Then we have a few rumors going around. From Software is teasing a new game. It's probably not Dark Souls 4 or Bloodborne 2, but they have a video of sorts. Obsidian Entertainment is teasing something after Pillars of Eternity 2. We'll probably find out after that releases. Chris Avalon, who is already involved in Pathfinder and Bard Sail 4, was teasing something about Fallout. But there's no confirmation there besides that he isn't involved with Obsidian right now. And there's also a rumor that a new Fable is on the way, but no one wants to say anything about that. And lastly, there's a few games further on the horizon. Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord. Bet you thought I forgot that. I've listed this one many years before, and it'll be done when it's ready. I'll put it back in the list when it gets a release date. Dragon Age 4 has been announced, but probably a long way off since it'll be after Anthem, which is 2019 itself. So I'd guess by 2020. Cyberpunk 2077 tweeted out a beep, so I assume that's coming to life and will be on the way, but when that is, who knows. And you know, there's always a chance that Elder Scrolls 6 will be announced over the next couple of years. You know, it'll come eventually, we know it's in the works, but when, your guess is as good as mine. And that's it, 30 upcoming RPGs plus some bonus ones that should be releasing through 2018 and some into 2019 depending on their development. Which ones are you most looking forward to? Also, what kind of RPG is your favorite? CRPGs, JRPGs, action RPGs, or something else entirely? Personally, I grew up with CRPGs and JRPGs, so I kind of like those the best nowadays too. Now, if you'd like to see more upcoming games, check out the other lists on the channel sorted by genre shown at the top of the video for many more upcoming PC games. Or you can have a look at my Gamer Encounters series, where I take a much more extensive gameplay look at specific new games. Alright, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. 
and I'll see you in the next video.